And then from there, we've got to get them back out and create space. So how the player would create space is by coming up and out of the way to help get those arms back to the ball. Now, when you're having a scroll through like Instagram or YouTube, one of the most common terms I believe is research is how to stay down through the golf ball, how to get that compression, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And in regards to staying down, it can be a dangerous topic as well. Mm. You know, for the golfer could be trying to do it a little too much. Mm. Like the explanation of, I guess, staying down for me would be staying in more returning back to this position throughout the golf swing and kind of returning to a simple similar similar posture that you had previously would you yeah agree? i i would say that uh, do not confuse this with keep your head down yeah because keeping <laughs> yeah. your head down guys what do you mean very quickly brushing over this more than likely you're not going to turn you're actually probably going to dip in the down in the back swing and then from there you're more likely yeah. to not cover the ball so we're going to talk about three keys here to ensure that you're staying down through the golf ball getting a little bit more compression on those strikes tobes and the first one of which is just going to be to ensure that in our address position we are the right distance away from the ball yeah. because if we simply are one. standing too far away too far on our toes as much as we would like to stay in our posture we're going to miss that ball by a mile right so yeah. how do we check that we're the right distance away from the ball what are we going to do here this is one of my favorite setup ones this is good so what you're basically doing there right as you take a setup position to find the correct i'd like to call it arm hang or length away from the golf ball it's a very very common question right that we get and i've had to come up with multiple checkpoints throughout my whole coaching career to try and work this out for people is is typically I want to see the humerus bones here, so the bicep muscles, mm -hmm. right? Well, and, and the tricep obviously, but from the elbow up to the shoulder, that big hanging down vertically underneath your shoulder. Yeah, absolutely. And then if you were to close your eyes in the address position, let's say you've got the visual reference that Tobes just gave us. Yeah. Uh, back a tricep, really just in front of knees, yeah. that nice straight arm hang, and then goes through the balls of the feet. Yeah. If you close your eyes when the club is behind the ball, not hovering, not standing up, close mm. your eyes when the club is behind the ball, you should feel a relatively equal planted weight distribution between your toes and your heels. When we remove the sense of your eyesight, essentially it just brings so much more awareness to your pressure. Yeah. Because with our eyes open, we tend to like micromanage with our chin and everything else. Mm -hmm. We can feel like we're balanced. But I find that when I get my students to uh, close their eyes in their address position, it really gives them a feeling of where they should be. I like to say practice your setup position without the ball. Because people react to the ball first. Yeah, that's great. Do you agree? Yeah, that's great. Yeah, so people like they see the ball and they go to dress, oh, it's over there, so I'm going to make my adjustment. So get comfortable with the checkpoints that you need yeah. and then let's bring the ball into play. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense? I think that's great. Yeah, I like that's it. Great. So we are combining those together. We've got our nice relaxed arm hang. We're not straight and rigid. We're mm. nice and relaxed, closing our eyes, equal weight distribution between the toes and the heels. Now, one last little final checkpoint for those of you who are not staying down and you are too far away in the address position is you can actually just tap your toes up and down like this. A little bit of exaggeration at the beginning of getting more towards your heels for someone that's so used to being on their yeah. toes is actually a great way to get yourself into position, okay? Hey, and now that you've mentioned that, right, people watching this will be like, oh, is that why people are starting to tap their toes a lot, getting comfortable in that sort of position, right? Yeah. It's, they're just finding the balance, they're feeling the surface they're on. Yeah. And now you've seen that, you'll probably just watch everyone now and you won't stop thinking about it. Yeah, you know? exactly, It's pretty crazy, exactly. right? When you're watching your next tournament, guys, yeah. view what they're doing with their feet, they're certainly not <laughs> still, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. All right, so number one was all about setup. That's the main reason that you are not staying down through the ball. The main reason being is when you are too far away, essentially your body has to do work to get back to the ball. Mm. Uh, you're going to be off balance. Your body stops rotating. The club gets flung out before you know it. You are early extending and standing up. That's key. Plenty of problems can come from there. Mm. And the main subjects area for today is losing a posture and not being able to stay down. Correct. That's one of the ones that we would see from that. All right, so number two, let's talk about the movement of the body in the backswing. Let's talk at the upper and lower body about rotation. So let's assume a good posture here from the address position. Talk about what the amateur golfer who generally tends to stand up at the moment of impact. Yeah. Right? There is a certain term called depth. Let's yeah. talk about that. And I tell you what as well is that a person who is who is uh, having the issue of coming out of posture and not staying down enough 
will actually probably do this more and more and more to their detriment because yeah. they'll want to stay down, right? So what they'll do is I'll take a backswing, trying to stay down and just retract their arms to completely behind them because they're so concerned on wanting to stay over the ball. Mm. And then what the problem is from that, if you do that again for me, once you find yourself there, is that these arms get, we can use the term stuck, would you agree with that there? Oh yeah, it feels horrible. And then from there, we've got to get them back out and create space. So how the player would create space is by coming up and out of the way to help get those arms back to the ball. Now we're in this position here. That, okay, so the club's behind us and they've got no room. So to yep. create space, to allow those arms to lengthen in front, the body stands up. Then we get this position before you know it, the arms are tucking around the side. Yeah, and the issue is everyone says, oh, you didn't stay down. You didn't stay down. You didn't stay down. So they continue to keep staying do down more and more, right? more and more and more <laughs> and more. Yeah, I know. And they're just digging, digging for uh, chocolates. There's no chocolates under the ground is what I'd say to students, right? So right. We, we need to um, develop a technique or I guess a motion or a drill to start encouraging rotation. Mm -hmm. Freedom of movement, allowing to be dynamic to then move back down a little bit more. So important. Yeah, so what we see in the golf swing when we watch the best players in the world, we see this slight rotation and kind of rise, mm. right? Which is opposite to the person who wants to stay down, right? Yeah. And then from there, then they regather themselves back down into what's a golf ball. Yeah. And it was misinterpreted through the early days of Tiger Woods as he was a dipper, yeah. but he wasn't dipping. It's this rise and then coming back down and recreating shape. So to get that, it's important to make sure that you're getting that that rotation stuff. A lot of stuff that we've done in previous videos before, right? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, when I get to the top of the backswing, let's just talk about the depth component, right? Yeah, so okay, great. as I turn and rotate, I want you to talk about the end of my handle relative to my back yeah, foot as yeah. a reference for the guys at home. Hey, this is a good one, right? So this is another great checkpoint. I love feedback tools, right? Is that from here, if I drop a line from the body of your club down to there, right? You are on roughly your trail ankle, trail heel around here. This is a really good checkpoint and there is outliers out there, trust me. There is outliers, but this is a great checkpoint. Now, Kerrod can only get here with good arm structure and, 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 and turn with a lot of good rotation here. He can't get there if I put him back to there and then retract the arms, it's challenging for him to actually get that depth on the way back. Yeah, totally agree, and I yeah. can feel that. And the good the good thing about getting into this, let's say, position with more mm. depth, more rotation, yeah. I honestly feel, mate, that I have so much room to get this golf club coming down in front, and that is the important component here of staying down. Yeah. Because as I turn and rotate in the backswing, That's I've a good got one. all this room for the arms to come unload underneath my chest now before I know it yeah. we're coming through and in all my lessons it's funny you say that it's like we will hear someone say oh I've got more so much more room now yeah. I don't have to do this yeah. you know which is interesting so and we see lots of videos are coming out of posture we see lots of people trying to do this but it's it's for multiple reasons that we've spoken about so far yeah just that little checkpoint getting enough rotation yeah. in the backswing number two uh, we will give the guys just a great little drill that they can practice at home or at the golf course before every mm. single shot I see you do this all the time Tobes you're gonna chuck the golf club across your chest like yeah, this one for me. <laughs> and the end of the reference yeah. of that golf club here you're really trying to get that where should we get that end of the golf club? Yeah, from? it's the one I use a lot, right? So we want to get that that uh, golf shaft there. Just a, one iron head I'll put here on the inside of the trail, trail foot like this, mm. and then I'll put my shaft there. And I simply want to see with your head staying neutral, I want to see that that shaft is somewhat covering that. That would tell me you've got 90 degrees of rotation through your chest, your thoracic is extended, and you've developed 45 degrees of um, pelvis rotation there. Yeah, great mention to the uh, simplistic reference that players can use is that shoulders turning 90 degrees relative to your individual mobility. Yep. If you're young and fit and flexible, you might be able to have less lower body turn. Yep. Uh, if you've been playing golf for a series of years, there may be a little bit more to allow that trail leg to extend and get that depth. Just to give you this room back here, guys, to allow the arms to unload and then really get into it. So that's tip number two. Fantastic little takeaways there for the guys to use. Yeah. Uh, reason number three, we get into like a pretty reasonable position that will tend to sort out the plane of the shaft. We see a lot of steep shafts are simply because you're not rotating, right? So let's get this turn. This shaft is like, let's say, as that reference that Tobes was using uh, previously through that right bicep here. But what if the club face is open, be it wrist angle or simply just a poor grip in the address position? What effect does that have on your body in the downswing to square things up? Because I feel like from this position, if this face, and we'll give mm. the guys a reference, if I simply just rotate through, well, that's going Mississippi right. Mississippi okay. right, yeah. not bad, so, huh? Let's get to the top. <laughs> yeah, great, so the club face is open, mm -hmm. right? And then from there, um, 
you know, it's chicken or the egg stuff, but I'll always say the student reacts to the club face. Correct. So the body will react to the club face. So if someone's club face is uh, incredibly open through there, they've got to find a way to try and close that. Now, what we'll see a lot through that is lack of rotation. So as you're coming down there, Kara, the, bo the body will tend to stall, and then the body's going to start to look for space because it's not turning in a circle anymore. It's going to stand up in an effort for you to try and... Um, ro um, rotate the forearms to square this club face up because yeah. if i was rotating which assists us in yeah. staying down through the ball the ball's going to go so far right so yeah getting to the top of the swing and then from there if yeah. we have our club face is in a neutral position which we'll give you a reference for in a second gives us plenty of room to then simply just swing through the golf ball okay yeah so this is not a grip video but there's plenty out there that you can check to ensure you've got a good grip what is the reference at the top of the swing here mate for what we would be looking forward to if you've got a relatively neutral club face, which would allow you to stay in your posture through the golf ball. Yeah. Okay, so as we get to the top, if my toe of the golf club's pointing down, come over and adjust it to where it should be. Yeah, so if we kind of take our vision away from the club face as well, particularly, and use the wrist as well as a good one here, because at different points of the golf swing, it's gonna look a little bit differently. So I just like to try and make sure that if I see a very neutral wrist angle here with the forearm, so I'll see the glove hand like through that, mm -hmm. and a feedback tool I would use is stick a, stick a T in there, mm -hmm. in there to try and ensure that that is somewhat square and flat there as a very good baseline to start from. Yeah, great. So, and drawing some lines on some on the screen with a professional golfer, you will tend to see at the top of the swing, the club face will generally be close to matching the lead arm, will generally be yeah. close to matching the shoulder plane. Yes, And then on. as the golf club gets down into this position here, this club face, guys, we would like to see in movement, not just throwing it and positioning it there, but in the movement of the golf swing, that that club face is somewhat matching your spine angle. All things being equal, you will not have to subconsciously stall out and get that club face thrown at the ball to square things up. Yeah, and, and on that wrist, oh sorry, on that club face angle in the backswing there, you mentioned the checkpoint there of club shaft parallel in the downswing. That's a good reference point for us to check, but not so much a one I would be training a lot of the time is that mm. you can find a way to get your wrists and club face organized somewhat in the backswing, mm -hmm. wherever it needs to be. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you can get it done earlier, you can get it done later, whatever you need to have to try and keep that club face as square as possible, especially because what we spoke about today, if it's open, then you're forced to do that there. So if you can square that up, you know, through the backswing area there, it'll make your job a lot easier coming down for sure. Yeah, absolutely. All right, mate, so let's throw these three together. We're gonna to get into yep. our uh, functional balance setup position, making sure we've got an equal weight distribution between our toes and our heels. From there, we're gonna ensure that we've got enough depth or turn in the backswing to allow this golf club to have some room in the downswing. And then the final one there, guys, is all about ensuring that club face is square. So I'm just gonna map this out by doing a slow rehearsal, feeling all three of those. That feels really good. How's that look, Tobes? It looks great. It looks okay. great. Let's hit it. Let's see how it comes off. Nice shot. And and the great thing about all of that, right, is to close in on is that we never actually spoke about trying to encourage anyone to do that. Yeah. We we came up with a solution to make you not have to worry about trying to do that. Right. That's how you stay down. <laughs> Thanks, Dad.